Meet Daryl and Patrice. Last year, their Airbnb property made $700,000. And today we're gonna take a look at how they did it. With everything from tiny houses to tree houses, this is a truly unique property. This single piece of land is home to seven short-term rentals, but it wasn't always this way. Originally, this was Daryl and Patrice's home. Let's rewind to their first Airbnb in 2015. I am Daryl, one half of the Atlanta Treehouse, and I'm Patrice, the other half, the more important half. They've been Airbnb hosts since 2015, and they started by just renting out rooms in the house that they lived in. This is where their Airbnb journey started with this house right here. They purchased this property back in 2012 just with the intent to live in this home. Before we get into the story of how they built this Airbnb empire, I wanna ask you guys, please give this video a like and subscribe and hit the bell notification if you like my videos. It really does help out my channel so I can make more videos like this one. I also wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Republic. Republic is a global private investing platform that makes it possible for everyone to invest in private companies. Historically, only accredited investors, people that have over a million dollars, institutional investors were able to invest in private companies and gain the outsized returns. But in the past, there's really been no way for the average person to be able to do that. But Republic is changing that and making it so everyone can invest. They have everything on there from startups, crypto projects, real estate, art, music, and more. The platform already has 1.5 million users and has deployed over a billion dollars across over 600 companies in their ecosystem. 29 unicorns have been on the platform. They have a team of investment professionals that are working to curate investment opportunities that have high growth potential. It's also nice that they allow you to see all the deal information in one place. But always remember when investing to only invest what you can afford to lose. So if you guys wanna get started investing on Republic, be sure to go to republic.com slash Shelby and use my code. Don't forget to use that code because it'll give you a $100 added bonus when you make your first investment. Thank you to Republic for making videos like this possible. And now let's get into this Airbnb story. We kind of wanted to compartmentalize our old living room. So we have the dining here with the solarium, tons of plants all around, living room over there and kind of the bedroom area. What we did to kind of separate the spaces in there was to put the wood slats as the headboard over and then also down. So it kind of makes it like a very snug area, very uh, cozy. We bought this property in the house, in the barn structure. It was the only thing that was here when we bought it. And we bought it in 2012, and it cost us $250,000. That was a lot of money to us. That was all the money we had for the down payment of the house. We hugged and I cried because we didn't know how we were gonna pay the mortgage the following month. I think we had between the two of us a hundred, $1,000 in the bank between the two of us. So when they heard about Airbnb, they decided to give it a try to help pay the mortgage. It wasn't a very ex acceptable thing in our community. And even with our, some of our friends that heard we were doing Airbnb, Airbnb in our rooms, letting strangers, as they say, come into our home. We were kind of told we were crazy for doing that. So we had some really cool guests um, and we had some really weird guests. So. I think we were motivated to kind of move away from that method sooner than later. And then we started renting the entire house, which was quite lucrative. We started to kind of toy the idea of, could we rent out smaller micro spaces and still command the same dollar? So after some time of renting out their actual home, they decided to build a tiny house on the property. This thing we built in a factory, it took us about eight weeks to build it due to um, filming schedule, but Normally, it would, this thing would take us about three to four weeks to build. When they first built it, it had a more rustic design, but they've since made it a little more modern and appealing to renters. They clearly nailed it with this tiny house. I think it's super cute, and the bookings speak for themselves. We were featured on HGTV, Tiny House Big Living, and after the show aired, our tiny house booked out solid for nine months. The next morning, he wakes up and he looks at me and he goes, I think we're on to something. So our first tiny house that we built on Airbnb, it generated roughly between $25,000 and $3,000 a month. That was our first voyage or for foray into that, the tiny house space. And they did end up financing this build. 
So Patrice took out a small personal line of credit loan for the 65K and the interest rate was crazy. It was like 18%. Yeah. I said to him, we gotta pay this thing off like really fast. Yeah. Um, and we did, we paid it off really, really fast. They were able to pay it off in 18 months. So after the success of their first tiny house, they decided to make this barn themed tiny house. The cost to build that one was $16,000, right? So. As you could see, our cost was much, much less. So our return on that investment, I think we were paid off in about four months on that one. This one was actually just already on the property and it was just one of those sheds that you can get at Home Depot. This was a general Home Depot low shed. It's um, 16 by 16 lower, 16 by 16 upper. So this one actually is 256 square feet. And here's a look inside the barn. You would never know that this used to be a shed. It's got a small kitchen and some stairs leading up to the bedroom. And you can still see that it has the structure of a barn in these angles, which gives it a unique element. At this point, they knew they were on to something. So they took out a small loan from the bank and built units three, four, and five. And this one is a triplex with three different tiny houses. We wanted to do something very different than our other unit one and two. And so Daryl came to me and said, we need something for like the guys. So darker colors, industrial, you'll see some metals in there, lots of woods. Unit four is a farmhouse chic. And then unit five, we wanted to do something that felt more bohemian. So we have something for everyone on the property. On all of their projects, they did what they could to upcycle materials. So the wood on unit number three, that's the actual boat ramp that was here initially when we first moved in. The wood on the exterior of it is actually from a slave plantation down in uh, South Georgia. I purchased it, I fell in love with it, and I wanted to keep the history, and it's also a good story behind it in regards to, to the why. So all of those units, unit three, four, and five are under Airbnb Plus. We do really well on those also, and they each generate roughly $3,000 each. Unit three itself generates a little bit more. I think it was with that project that we came up with this 18 months return on investment. Yeah. We should not enter a project if we cannot pay a loan back or ourselves back within 18 months. And that has been our philosophy for every project. Their next project was much bolder. They decided to build a tree house. The reason why we decided to jump in a tree house is because after running the numbers, all the other properties were only generating us roughly about 15 grand. It led me in the direction of creating a tree house. And I said, hey, if I charge four to $500 a night, would someone book it? Yes, people did book it and it generates over 10 grand a month. This is their first treehouse on the property and it was the first treehouse Airbnb in Atlanta. There aren't that many treehouse Airbnbs in Atlanta even today, so this thing still books out solid. This was my first time actually building a treehouse completely at all. It took a lot of research. I've built every single thing from scratch and it takes a lot of time, a lot of labor of love, and a lot of banging your fingers with the hammer. So tree houses are notoriously difficult to permit. So what they've done is actually just built the house on stilts, kind of like you see in places that get hurricanes. You'll see a lot of houses built on stilts like this, but the stairs are actually wrapped around a tree and that's what really makes it feel like a tree house. Obviously the outside is super cool, but come on, we've got to take a look inside. So we wanted to create a very open concept space. My wife wanted to make it very, very feminine. A lot of pinks, a lot of peaches, a lot of creams. I guess I thought about it as if I was um, a bride and I was gonna get ready for my wedding day, like what would I want an Airbnb to look like? Guests from all over the world enjoy booking this treehouse. What I love about the main treehouse is they have all these different vintage touches. It just feels like there's a lot of character, even though this is technically a new build. It feels older in a really cool way. They were able to salvage decor pieces, windows, even the wood to build the place. The floor is from the actual chicken coop. So what I did was I whitewashed it and added a little, little bit of pink to it. Even the beams, the two by fours, they're all reclaimed. That bed I actually drove to South Carolina to pick up at three in the morning, mm. arrived at six o'clock, picked it up back home by nine o'clock the yeah. same day. You could totally see this as a spot where like a bridal party gets ready before a wedding. Things like this vanity mirror, it's like perfect for photos. And they also rent all of these out on peer space to make some additional income. 
It took me roughly 55 days with one other guy to build it. Uh, all in cost was 128. So you've seen what the treehouse looks like. Now let's take a look at how it's doing on Airbnb. Just the numbers from last year alone, we did $168,000 just from that treehouse listing on Airbnb. And this year we're projected to do upwards over $200,000. And they didn't stop there. This ignited the treehouse obsession. They decided to build two more really unique treehouses on the property. The first one we'll be taking a look at is actually a converted bus that they ended up putting in the trees. It was a operable Airstream slash Spartan trailer. Um, it was in Lawrence, Kansas. And I sent Brandon, my assistant, to go and get it. He dragged it here back to Atlanta parked it for three years and we built this thing in 2020. Now it's the 14th most popular listing in the world for Airbnb unique spaces. So this treehouse is really more of a lounge area with a bed and it's actually included when you book the main house unit. On one end, there's a cozy little seating area. In the middle is a Murphy bed and on the other end is a built-in seating area that's perfect for dining. We wanted something that was really Atlanta. This window that was cracked and I think it would have cost us about $1,000 to replace it. So instead of replacing the window, we decided we were gonna embrace the crack, but we were gonna fill that window with stickers that represent this amazing city, a city that feels very black and very hip hop and all the music and culture. That was one of the things that was important. This roof alone took three weeks to do. We cut quarter inch pieces of uh, plywood, ripped every single one down. We just wove the whole thing and just put the structure up and bolted to the ceiling. And we added insulation on the backside of it. Now let's get into the cost to build this treehouse. The breakdown of the numbers are the treehouse is two grand. The deck, we paid roughly about $12,000 and roughly another three to four thousand dollars on labor costs of my assistant and roughly one grand for odds and ends. So one thing I want to point out when it comes to the cost of this treehouse is it would be a lot higher if there was a kitchen and bathroom. So when we're seeing the cost be relatively low to build a treehouse, it's because a lot of these don't have kitchen and bathroom. So the overall amount that this treehouse made was pretty impressive. We made roughly about $175,000 pretty amazing numbers that this treehouse did. Now let's look at their last treehouse. And this here is their latest treehouse. They have called Tin and Juice. So Tin and Juice is a different, totally different vibe. This one exterior is aluminum. Really crazy, funky, geometric shape. It's one of my favorite ones. This one took 35 days and it costs about 20 grand to build. So here is the Tin and Juice treehouse. It's super small, it's super cozy. This one is their smallest treehouse that they have. But when it comes to treehouses, people aren't really looking for like a huge house. They're just looking for the treehouse experience. So that doesn't really deter bookings. It is more basic in the amenities, but not in the design. The design is very fun. The maximalist design works super well for Airbnbs because it's just something interesting. It's something different. People might be a little afraid to actually decorate their home this way, but for a weekend, it is really fun. This treehouse actually looked the most complicated to build and actually put up in the trees, and I thought it was really cool to see how they did it. All these beams are put in with tabs that I ordered from a company online. Just to build the foundation and structure of this took four weeks. We're able to move so fast with the construction because I do it all myself for one. And number two, my wife, she plans it out. So as soon as the day that we're done putting on the roof and the walls, she just goes in and late night with the kids sometime and just decorates the whole space. And next morning I'll come back, done, photograph, list, cha-ching. Pretty great system they've got. Okay, now let's look at the expenses. Besides the mortgage, our general expenses for each property here for the bungalows is roughly $50 a month based off their water usage and electrical uses and septic and sewer. For the larger tree houses, it adds on additional $75 each. At the end of the day, we're still well under $2,500 a month. So their expenses are pretty low and they're making quite a bit. Last year alone, we did $705,000 annually. But the biggest shock in all of this is... We don't have any debt. We don't owe the bank, we don't owe anyone. We owe ourselves, right? So right now we we, we kind of pay ourselves back. Um, but yeah, no, no debt to anyone outside of ourselves. 
With all their success on this property, they've decided it's time to expand out onto a different project. We've always saw this property as something very similar to Monopoly, small house, small house, and then you upgrade to the hotel space. So what we're doing right now is we are finding 20 locations globally to expand our brand um, of tree houses. And they've already started on the first treehouse resort. So we purchased 48 acres in upstate New York about four months ago, and that will be our next location. Um, we are already through permitting and have been approved to build 10 new structures along with a badass wedding barn that will, there will be no limitations on events. We can do large weddings, we can do events, video shoots, anything. Um, that our guests are looking for, we will have it. I was like, Daryl and Patrice, you need to start a YouTube channel and document this. It's so cool. So they actually did. So I'll link below their YouTube channel, their Airbnbs and everything. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Checked In. If you want to see another treehouse, I'll have a link on the screen to another Checked In episode where we interviewed a treehouse owner. But that's going to be it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video.